So now we need to talk about what is how to find a z-score. We talked about what it is. It's a measure of position. But the formula is we take an individual data item, subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. Now, symbolically, it's written as the formula in the two boxes where they're exactly the same. We're just using x to represent whatever number we're studying. Remember, when it comes to subtracting the mean, we have a different symbol for a population mean than we have for a sample mean, but it's still a mean of the data set we're studying, and so that goes along with the standard deviation. If it was from a population or a sample, the symbol would look different, but either way, it's just a standard deviation. So here is an example. Who is relatively taller? A 67 inch man or a 62 inch woman? So we know the 67 inch guy is taller than the woman, but relative to men, how does he compare versus the woman who's 62 inches? Remembering that 60 inches is five feet. So we're talking about a guy who's 5'7 versus a girl who's 6'2. The average height for men is given is 69.9 inches with a standard deviation of three inches. And the average height for women is 64.6 inches with a standard deviation of 2.8 inches. So in both cases, we can see the people we're studying are below average, but how do they still compare? So in part A, if I want to find the z-score, the position for the 67 inch tall man, I'm gonna use the formula to find a z-score. So the very first thing I do is figure out, you know, what numbers am I given that for a man I've got a mean and a standard deviation, but in this case I'm studying a 67 inch tall man. So I subtract him from the mean and standard deviation for his population, which gives me negative 0.966666, but as I mentioned, we're always going to go two places to the right of the decimal. So we have negative 0 0.97. To find the same thing for a woman, you could pause and try it and check your work, but I'll go ahead and keep going. Again, I need to take, oh sorry, circle the answer. I need to take the height of the woman, which is 62 inches, read back so I can subtract the mean height for women, divide by the mean standard deviation, I said the mean, divide by the standard deviation for women, and I get negative 0.92888, so negative 0.93. Applying the concept of z-scores, we just compared the height of a 62-inch woman and a 67-inch man, but we never really discussed who was relatively taller. So taking that information that the 67 inch tall man had a z-score of negative 0.97 and the 62 inch woman had a z-score of negative 0.93, who's taller? The negative number sometimes throws people off. So a lot of times I like to take a look at a number line. And so thinking about negative numbers going negative one down to negative two, negative 97, 0.97 is closer to negative one than negative 0.93 is. So that tells us the 62 inch tall woman is relatively taller for her sex. So this is a case where we use position of different sets of data, but then we could compare these different sets of data. So in the next problem, you're asked to solve it. You might wanna pause, see if you can get it right, and then check your work. If the average test score was 73 points with a standard deviation of 12 points and Jill got 89 points, what's her z-score? So what ends up happening here is we don't necessarily know if this is out of 100 points and we really want to know where's her standing. Yeah, that's a B plus and she almost got an A. But compared to the average, I mean, maybe the average was so close to that, her score isn't much higher. So we take the formula for a z-score. Z equals the data minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Or symbolically, I'm writing x minus mu over sigma using population data symbols, which we don't really know, but it's okay. So I take the 89 points that Jill got, subtract it from the class average, divide by the class standard deviation, and I get 1.33333, which is 
rounding two places after the decimal, 1.33. So what this is saying is Jill is only about one and a third standard deviations above average. And we'll talk more about some of those values later, but we now know she has a positive z-score, so she was above average, and she was more than one standard deviation, but less than two.